Cheers! Cheers. Welcome, Welcome to, to Movie, Movie Bitches. Bitches! A retro review. Tonight we're reviewing Heartbreakers! Heartbreakers. Finally! Yes! This is by special request. This yes. is dedicated from Jordan to his now husband Sam. Thank you both for your support and patience as we now are finally breaking hearts everywhere. Yes, we are trying to make our way through the Patreon requested movies and um, it's a pleasure because you guys pick some good ones. Yes. I'm into it. Oh wait, but first things first. Yes. I'm so sorry. But congratulations, Jordan and Sam. Second things second. Shout out to our Patreon supporters. Yes. Like Jordan and Sam, $5 a month gets you ad free early access. $10 gets you access to our viewing parties where it was mostly just us being like, and then that outfit. And then that outfit. <gasps> and Oh my God, that was hilarious. Yeah. So it was fun. Yeah. I, this movie's great. We will get into oh, it. Oh, so good. Yes. Yeah. But second thing second, make sure to subscribe, share. Oh, okay. Now. I have information for you to talk about later. Is Cher doing a Heartbreakers-esque? No. Oh. It's not that exciting. Oh, okay. But like Cher in a Heartbreakers-esque movie. Well, we're, you're not done with your speech. Okay, right. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Letterboxd, all of those things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and third things third, if we did our timing right, happy Valentine's Day. I didn't go to school for math. So, yes, Heartbreakers from 2001. Yeah. I love this movie. This is absolutely one of my favorite rom-coms. Yeah. I have watched this countless times, was obsessed, owned the soundtrack, was so excited to revisit yeah. Heartbreakers. Yeah. And let's get into it. Let's do it. So, directed by David Mirkin, who... Really, the only two movies that he directed were uh -huh. this and Romy Michelle's High School Reunion. It makes so much sense. Yes. They have such similar sensibilities, mm -hmm. um, strange, unique humor. Yep. Short skirts. <laughs> uh, girls that make their own clothes. You know, yeah. like um, wow. the entrepreneurial, go-getting, you that know. That is true. Female friendships. A bunch of character actors that you're like, yes! Yes, I mean the cast in this. Yeah. Aside from the main cast, obviously we've got Sigourney Weaver, Jennifer Love Hewitt, Gene Hackman, Ray Liotta, but also mm -hmm. Nora Dunn shows up. She's um, the Mrs. Danvers. Oh lady, yeah, oh, lady I love or her. whatever. She's yeah, great. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's, we'll, we'll get to it as we go, I guess. But yeah. there's just like countless little parts for character actors where mm -hmm. you're like, love them. Yeah. They showed up for a half an hour, you know, three days, three they, hours of work. And, right. One Judy Dench. Exactly. Yes. Yes, exactly. At the time, I remember this was billed as the female Dirty, dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Uh, it's very that, but I feel like it, it does its own thing too. Yes, it does. But there was a lot of casting things. Um, different people had their hands on the script, different mm. directors. You know, there was different iterations that were going around, Interesting. right? Interesting. So at one point or another in time, okay. people that were considered for the Jennifer Love Hewitt role, Cameron Diaz, Alicia Silverstone, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Right. Alyssa Milano. Oh. So it's like, yes, but no. Because mm. I feel like, we'll talk about it. I feel like Jennifer Love Hewitt is, kills it yeah. in this movie. Yes. And is walking a really fine line and is great. And we'll talk about it. People that were considered for Sigourney Weaver's part. Glenn Close. Kathy Moriarty. Angelica Houston. Oh. And Cher. Wow. Right? But again, I'll say this. I think Sigourney Weaver, oh. I mean, I wouldn't change it. Their dynamic is, is so great. fantastic. Yes, and Sigourney really is everything for me in this movie. Oh my gosh. She kills it. I can make men do anything. Boys, you can make boys do anything. Gas station attendants, bartenders, the occasional migrant worker. A one-shot seduction is child's play compared to getting someone to marry you. One thing I found really refreshing about this movie that I feel is lacking in, in modern film, mostly. A script. Of course. Of course. Clear motivation. Yes. Please just give it to me. Tell me who this person is and why they're reacting and doing the things they're doing. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. <laughs> and it is also essential to storytelling. <laughs> So like at every moment in time, I know exactly why Jennifer Love Hewitt is doing the things that she's doing. It's sure. acting out the way she's acting out. Do you even care at all who I am? I mean, I, I could be the antichrist or have the intelligence of a thermos, but unfortunately, those are not the matters the male penis ponders. So please tell me, why'd you walk all the way over here to ask to get me a drink? 
Well, because I'm the bartender. Every single thing that she's doing is working. The same with Sigourney Weaver. Everyone is clear. Yeah, and it doesn't take that much. No. I think that's the real it's key. Simple. It's, it's simple. You just need a line or two of exposition dialogue that it's like, great, here we go. Yeah. She got spurned once. You'll get lonely. Some moron hunk will come along. You'll think it's true love. You've never been so sure of anything in your life. And then bam. He will pull a conceive and leave, and then it's my life all over again. Mom, I'm not that stupid. Daughter, listen to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't fuck up about men because they're all terrible, and they'll leave you pregnant and alone, and then you'll have to con your way for the rest of your life. Yeah, the movie okay, starts. Yeah. And this? Danny Elfman. Well, obviously. I was like, gosh, this really sounds Tim Burton-y. What is this? What's happening? Ah, uh, I see. Witches of Eastwick, Danny Elfman, or was it like John? No, it was John Williams. Williams. It was like randomly John Williams. Yeah, yeah. But it has a, it's lighter. You know what I just discovered? John Williams did the score of that really blew my mind. It was around Christmas time, if that helps. Home Alone. Yeah. Yeah. He saved that movie. They talked about how uh, in all the early cuts, right, the movie wasn't quite gelling. And once they, same thing with E.T. Once they put the music on, it was like, it's a fucking masterpiece. Holy <laughs> shit. Bum, it was bum, the bow bum, on top. Bum, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. ba -da -dum -dum -dum. It's I mean, iconic. Like, yeah. Yeah, crazy. Well, having a, th a theme, I feel like um, so many scores are a little bit eh, these days. Yeah. There's not like And a... he is the master of themes, of like character themes. Yeah. And then doubling down on the, re like referencing those themes in larger pieces. Throughout. And... So you know like e how each character is represented in how I'm supposed to be feeling or how, yeah. you know, it's really... Wow. Skillfully done. Wow, when you Turns watch out. movies, that, it just really comes together. But yeah, so Danny Elfman You're did right, the Danny theme Elfman. for this. Yes. Uh, and it was like, me, you know, <laughs> well, uh, uh, and in the credits, we find out that Anne Roth oh. also did Sigourney Weaver's. You're so beautiful. I know it. It shows. It... Those little details show every outfit is tailored yeah. to them. Yeah. Right? Like, by them. But, in, well, in the, in movie, the movie, it's by them. They bought the sewing machine. They, they bothered to put that in there. You know, they're adding uh, little bedazzles everywhere. But there was so much care given. You can tell when, when clothes are fit. Yes. Yeah. When they <laughs> are custom made hard, for the person wow. wearing them in the movie. And it's like, you know what? That's nice. Well, okay, so the, the, the big takeaway from this watch, okay. I think, mm -hmm. was somebody needs to take every single one of Sigourney Weaver's looks in yep. this movie and do them for Drag Race. Absolutely. Because much like uh, What a Way to Go, yeah. uh, you know, slightly less ostentatious and fabulous, obviously. But wow, there was just ev every look had something. Had something. And there was a good variety of looks that mm -hmm. you could really just have the whole ensemble and then you could make it work. Exactly. You're so like, oh, I need a lingerie number. Boom, here, this. I mean. So the first, I mean, the first look is the best look, I think. Oh my God, this iconic ice blue wedding dress yeah. that just, oh, I just have to undo this one. That reveal, I mean, I want to see it on the runway. I want to yes. see it, this head to toe corseted lace blue catsuit that is cut within an inch of like holy shit yeah really but also having a hard time with this fabric but also makes sense in the context of the characters of the scene there's yes. a reason behind it yes. it's not just like what is the fucking thing no it's you know like I mean? oh i look so sexy but also good luck getting into this not oh i'm not a big fan of this material oh, oh. it's not gonna happen the signals that she's sending are confused. Oh my gosh. So if you haven't seen Heartbreakers. Oh yeah. Oh, 100%. Love it. Genuinely one of my favorite movies. I feel like this deserves cult status. Yeah. I don't think it gets enough credit yeah, for how fair. great it is. Yeah. And it's funny because well, I- Well, it does not because it is a 54% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is not the most egregious of some of the things that we've seen. Right. But nevertheless, it is not rotten. Not at all. It's funny because I remember seeing this in the theater, and mm -hmm. then I remember seeing it again in the theater, and then I, remember, wow. like, I went back. And so to me, this was a rousing success, but I, it did not do particularly well. And no. I'd like to champion it, and I, I want that. it to like become yeah. the success I think it should be. Yeah. Really, they don't make movies like this anymore. No, and, and you, we, we were lamenting that yeah. as we were watching, and I'm like, you know, I haven't seen it, but you have. Uh, anyone but you. 
But I'm like, and I was like, yes, more rom coms. But perfect example. I'll go on a little tirade. Okay. Jennifer Love Hewitt, Sydney Sweeney, Sweeney. both uh, women that are well endowed. Sure. They've got the juice, the stuff, right? In this movie, it makes perfect sense why she's dressed like a honey trap constantly. Damn it. Sure. It makes perfect sense that her tits are heaving it out character-wise, yes. right? And all of her bras fit. And everything is cut to make her look the absolute best that she can, right? right yeah. Um, and the whole juxtaposition of her character is when we first meet Jason Lee. Oh, you want to buy me a fucking drink? Why do you want to buy me a drink? I could have the intelligence of a thermos. <laughs> You know, blah, 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 blah. So everyone sees, she projects a certain thing, but yeah. she's actually much deeper and has much more going on and da, 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 da. Interesting that you read it that way, but sure, yes. Well, that she um, has been dealing with... I guess that she's... People right. ogling her. Her mom has put her in a position of constantly being objectified. Sure. Like, she's used to using these for power, yeah. but she also resents them. Yes. There's just a lot, right? I've, Fair. There's a lot going on. You let your own daughter seduce me? Do you have any idea how much therapy you people need? In Anyone But You, she's all acting like, oh, I'm an ugly duckling. What? I don't, does he like me? I don't know if he's gonna ask me on a date. And I'm like, girl, what? What's going on? What's happening? You know, unless the character has low self-esteem for reasons that right. have been established, right. for, you know, whatever, everyone can have low self-esteem. Sure. Even if, you know, they, they're the most beautiful person in the world, they might not think that. But give me a character reason for why. Right. Because her just being like, what? Oh, no. And also her bras didn't fit. <laughs> why? She had one that was jacked, you know, you don't know, but the straps were, it was tight, tightened to here. Mm. And in the back, it was so high on her oh. back. And I was like, what's happening, guys? <laughs> what's happening? I mean, I guess, you know, it is tough to find clothes that fit and bras that fit when you sure. have larger boobs. But, but not and if you are... Not if you're the executive producer of your own rom-com. <laughs> have it tailor-made, I don't care. If it was off the rack and it didn't fit, that's your problem. Anyway, <laughs> but also just motivation, logic leaps. It was out the window. I was so confused and confounded. Well, I'm flummoxed. I'm dumbfounded. And it was supposed to be much ado about nothing. That was like oh. kind of what it was supposed to be doing. And I was like, mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> no. Anyway, I could go on longer, but we won't. We won't. <laughs> but it was just, it was a perfect example of like, it is tough to write that line like Jennifer Love Hewitt does so well, I think, of being very sexy and mm -hmm. not alienating the female audience. Mm. Cause there is something there, right? Where you go like, oh, yeah. she's so fucking beautiful. Right, right. She has a three dimensional character that you completely understand yes. and are invested in. Yes, you like want her to find happiness. And it's, that's a tough thing to do. And I don't think she gets enough credit. I really like Jennifer Love Hewitt. I agree, no, I agree. And I guess my point was just that, I mean, I'm happy for that long tirade, but right. my point was just that I was like, I keep, we keep clamoring for more rom-coms. Yes. And then we get that. Why do you have a giant wrench? My mom gave me that. She said, no matter how broken something is, there's always a way to fix it. Oh, and it's like, no, that's not what I, that's not what I meant. Well, have what do a, you mean? Have a script. <laughs> have a script that makes sense. I was so, I mean, I think this is where we're at, right? In the era of we had 13 days to write this script and the writers couldn't be on set to fix things, right? You have to shoot it in 13 days, one location. <laughs> this is mid-March. It has to be finished writing by May 1st because of the writer's strike. I think it's starting to, like, we're starting to see the effects. Yeah. That's our hero ornament. That's an exact match from the original show that the daughter gave to her. What am I going to do now? Just rewrite everything because that's broken? I won't have time for that. Because there's just things where I'm like, what? What? Why would they say that? Why would they do that? Apropos of nothing. What does that have to do with anything, bitch? <laughs> what does that have to do with anything, bitch? Yeah, but so I, I, they don't make movies like this anymore. No, and tight and... farces that are shot well, yeah. long takes. Yeah. where you see the scenery breathe and the interactions between characters that naturally happen instead of cut to, cut to, cut to, yeah. cut to, cut yeah. to.
Yeah. yeah. And yet the thing is, is that this is not an expensive movie to me. No. They put the money in the costume budget. Love it. Yes. The wig budget. Oh my God. We haven't even, we haven't even touched on the wigs. They're so good. So good. And uh, Gene Hackman's uh, disgusting, liver spotted, you know, makeup. engorged nose makeup was really good. It was really good. That image will haunt me. Oh my God. There is nothing sexier than smoke billowing proudly out of a woman's hot red engorged nostrils. That image will haunt me. Yeah, that image <laughs> So also a side little thing. Yeah. Wonka. Oh boy. Yeah. All CGI kind of stuff like filled in, whatever, yeah. right? You know, like a lot of that. Yeah. Then uh -huh. at the very end, there's like a post, like mid credit scene. Okay. Where they like take, they eat candy things or whatever and turn into these like goblins. Yeah. Practical, Practical. effects. Because they, they because clearly, they, didn't, uh, they were they like, we're not going to CGI. Yet. They're like, we're not going to pay to CGI the end credit scene. So just figure it out. But it looked better than the rest? No, it looked okay. pretty shitty because it looked okay. like they had $5 to right. put it together and right. they went to Michael's and got some green paint and slapped it on their faces. But like. <laughs> But still. But still. And I was like, or yeah. hear me out. Uh -huh, uh -huh. If you had just spent a little more money and had practical effects the to entire time. To make it time, look decent. Yeah. Or yeah. balance and practical effects with like CGI touch-ups or fill yeah. in the gaps and, yeah. and, and flush it out a little bit more. Uh, Onyx yeah. the Fortuitous. Perfect example. I'm going to keep bringing it up. I love it. I love it. Anyway, anyway, it starts off Ray Liotta and Sigourney's Weaver. Is Sigourney's Weaver. Sigourney's Weaver. Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> Sigourney Weaver's Sigourney's body. Sigourney Weaver. Yes, of course. In this, her Weaver is weaving in this movie. I'm in terrific shape. Feel my butt. Uh, I am not feeling your butt again, Mother. Okay, we all know it's wonderful. Feel my butt, Mother. I'm not gonna <laughs> feel, feel your butt. butt. We again. all know it's great. <laughs> so yes, Heartbreakers. Go see it. Holy shit. Oh yeah. It's. Fantastic. The cast, the writing, the direct, like across the board. The the music supervision. Yeah. It, this was an era of really fun, poppy, not poppy in a, um, what Basic. came out this year no. kind of way, but just like the music tells me what the scene is supposed to feel like. Yeah. <laughs> what? Wow. Wow. I love it. Yeah. And I really think something's got to give took, because that came out in 2003. Oh, you looked it up. Okay, great. I think it, this started the trend, let's say, okay. of the sort of um, French, you know. Uh, yes, there was a. Doo -doo -doo you know, that kind of, ooh, I'm gonna put on the soundtrack and everyone in the car is gonna love it. Sure, I mean, honestly. Every single person in the car, no one's gonna have a complaint. Something's gotta give soundtrack. Killer. Killer. But anyway, yes, mother daughter. Con oh, Ray Liotta. Right. So, wow, we're all over the place. But this movie's so good. So good. Ray Liotta playing a parody of his Goodfellas character. Yes. You know, I'm from Jersey. I'm a I chop, chop shopper. No more conning. No more. If you're going to be my wife, you got to live a respectable life. Chopping cars. But he does a good job, too, of you, you do. You still like him. You do. And you know what? Like, they set up. At first, you feel so bad for him, right? He's just in love with Sigourney Weaver. He just wants to fuck her. And then she's she... been waiting patiently, it seems. It seems, right? Yeah, I mean, we find out it's been four months. Four months. And uh, I got really in character. Um, I was on all fours for four months. Right. They've been together, they've gotten engaged. She, you know, she won't let him fuck him, fuck her. And so you're like, oh, you know, he just has blue balls. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Right. And then you quickly learn he's got frostbite. that he's a he's a schmuck. Oh my god. Thanks. Is that frostbite? I'm fine. A um lovable schmuck. A lovable he is you a know? lovable schmuck. And I think they are kind of suited for each other at the end. You're like, you well, know what? I this seems you know, like I'm works. always here for a unlikely, you know this is my happy ending, it might not be yours sure. kind of vibe, right? Like sure. we talked about with Adam's Family Values, we're like, is there a rewrite where Joan Cusack and Uncle Fester end up together because actually she's Perfect. a sadist and he can't be killed, you know? <laughs> she, she's a serial murderer and he can't seem to be murdered. And is there something there <laughs> right. that's actually perfect? <laughs> yeah. 
So I always like that kind of where we find um, everyone's happy ending. This movie does a great job of, doesn't matter, don't worry about it. Oh yeah. Move on. It's happened because it did and it, it exists and it's oh, gone. Oh, Gene Hackman's dead? It's fine. You're never gonna see him again. They had to cover up an entire murder. You didn't see one second of it. He is gone from the film. Doesn't matter. I didn't even, oh, what? Oh yeah, oh, he never showed up again. Wow, that was fun. But first you gotta help us make it look like this creep died here alone and peaceful. So there's no questions. You know how to do that? I'm from Jersey, aren't I? It's really incredible with that body. Did I care? No. <laughs> well, I guess he is really good with handling bodies. You know, he is from Jersey. One line, boom, done, great. Apparently that was an ad lib from Ray Liotta. I love it. Anyway, uh, this, uh, this wedding. We, we uh, talked enough about the wedding dress, right? Did Holy we? shit. And this I'm, wig, and this wig. Yeah. Oh my God, so good. So she falls asleep. Yep. It's a whole opening. There's about a 15, 20 minute. You're not Short sure film. what this movie's about or what right. it's, it takes its time yeah. to set up what's happening. So then you are surprised when he goes to work. Here's Honey Trap, you know, example in the dictionary. Jennifer Love Hewitt. Um, this tight gray. Oh. oh, my ass is just hanging out of this skirt as I bend over to find this micro this mini. File. Mm. Yeah. Um, and, and her heaving bosom. Heaving. This isn't what it looks like. I, I, I swear, her hair got stuck in my zipper. I, 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 I wasn't getting nothing. 17 hours. We have been married 17 hours. Quick settlement, blah, blah, blah. Oh, hi, mom. Mother, daughter, con team. I can't believe you wore the gray dress. I distinctly said the blue. It worked, didn't it? And it's really fabulous. Yeah. And all of the twists and turns that it takes, it does it, it's like a caper. Yes. Like in that, it's like, you thought this, it was doing this, you thought this, it was doing this. We've mentioned this, so you know it's there. Right. You know, oh, Barbara taught me the con early on. And Bancroft shows up as IRS lady, and then do 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 later oh turns out. Oh my god, up, it's Barbara. It's her mentor, she was conning the daughter. There's so many. And just, then she cons them. And then she cons them, and who's conning who, and, and but it never becomes. Um, Too convoluted. It never becomes, what was that, Atomic Blonde, where you're like, who is con the side of who? Like it kept being I like. I remember liking Atomic Blonde. We didn't hate it, but the end was, but then I double, double, triple, triple cost right. you because of the yes. triple, double, double, yeah. double, and he was like. Yeah. Because <laughs> you didn't really care? Yeah. You didn't really care? Anyway, let's just talk about some outfits. Okay, great. Also, I do want to talk about briefly because I was confusing this. I'm pretty sure what happened was I watched The Hustle with Rebel Wilson and, right. and Hathaway. I did not watch. And I remember it being okay. Mm. My thoughts from the trailer were that it was trying, leaning too much into trying to be a broad comedy and it didn't have the grounding mother-daughter relationship in this or that the actual, like I think the romance between Jason Lee and her really works. I agree. And between Ray Liotta and Sigourney really like it, it grounds it in some kind of character yeah. um, arc and study and you feel it. Yeah. And my feeling at least from the trailer of The Hustle was it was just going to go straight broad comedy and not really have that. It was more of that yeah. and it was like the oh, we're battling two different con artists battling each other to try and land someone who was actually conning them. Or I don't remember. It was, a, it was a blur. Con artist movies are tough because you don't want to break the seal of, oh, no, I feel bad. Like, I, you want it to stay light and fun. Right. Right? Well, and yeah, you always want the mark to be someone that is either an asshole and deserves it. Right. Or won't really notice that it's gone anyway. Or something, right. Or whatever, yeah. right? How much? Three billion with a few million more every day. So we get our first big cameo. Carrie Fisher shows up yeah. as Sigourney Weaver's lawyer. She's great. Yeah. She doesn't have a ton to do. Loved it. She was there for a, a Judy Dench. Exactly. Three hundred thousand dollars. For one day? One horribly traumatic day in which my client suffered irreparable psychological damage to her self-esteem. Oh, and she keeps the Mercedes. If even, it might have been like a half a Judy Dench. It might have been, but she was there and yes. she brings so much. She really you know? does. And um, and Anne Brinkhoff shows up. Yeah. And Jeffrey Jones shows up to be the, the hotel, you know, uh, concierge. Since we seem to have lost your reservation, we can only let you have this suite for one night. Ah! Uh, then I'm sure we can work something out. He's oh, barely yeah. in it, but, barely but there it. he is. 
Ricky Jay, famous magician of, right. you know, magicianing, is the auctioneer guy, you know, but there he is. He taught Jennifer Love Hewitt the card tricks. Oh, fun. Yeah, she was good at that. Yeah. With the whole zip -a -dip -a -dip -a. You know who I would enjoy in this movie and or a movie like this. Sure. A famous auction scene that we talked about recently. Oh, for Trudy Grant? Always. Always. And, uh, I'm and, so... And Sandra Bernhardt. Yeah. Always. Always. Uh, uh, 100 million and one, Waldo. Fantastic. I bid by my own wench, Kel Baumer. Don't hate me, baby. If they're just in the background, Sandra and Richard would do it. Right? They're, oh, and then here we are. I love that. Um, I was so glad that like Richard E. Grant is just on your radar now. And oh, it's yes. Just, like, he's so good. Yeah. What can I tell you? I'm the villain. Kevin Nealon shows up to be the guy at the bar that's, buy me a drink, no, buy me a drink. Oh, I, oh, yeah. oh yeah, I know. Asshole or whatever. Hi. Uh, One excuse me. May I grab your nuts? <laughs> Can I get your drink? We go with Tenzi. Stupid jerk. <laughs> Could you imagine if that happened and you were just like at some random bar and wherever the fuck? Right. Uh, yeah, that'd be good. The Sarah Silverman shows up. Zach Galifianakis yeah. shows up. Everybody's oh, wow. in this movie. He was the friend in the He was the, the bar. friend, yeah. Didn't process it. Wow. Wild. And then they head to Palm Beach and Sigourney Weaver in this red strapless corseted jumpsuit with the matching hat that's like a visor oh, yeah. but it's like oh my god it's so good. so good and even like so Sigourney Weaver's outfits are obviously more très chic to me more like yes bitch why you wear that but I do think Jennifer Love Hewitt's outfits if they weren't cut properly would be a oh, completely different storyline sure they're literally tailored to her yes and they all uh are a little bit different yeah but the same yeah you know it's that well, kind of thing she's really giving that early 2000s late 90s looks yeah but in a very tailored like fashionable way for right. the time for, for the, the time, time. For the whereas time. sigourney weaver is giving much classier classic yeah more couture more yeah. fabulous yeah, yeah. Um, I mean that that like tan corset that's like see through, but then with like the lace on top and the gold belt with like the beige suiting. Oh my god! Yes. Yes. I want to see every one of these as a drag look. Honestly, I'm not joking, bitch. I'm not joking, bitch. But yes, they're in Palm Beach and they're gonna find a uh, new mark. Yes. And they go in through in the boat. Right, we well, maybe you're into necrophilia. <laughs> Oh, because Michael Hitchcock also shows up in this movie. He's the, my eye, mother, it burns! Oh, ah! Get away from him, get away! I told you it was dangerous to come to these low-class bars. Oh, stinks, mama, it stinks oh, so bad! Mother will help you, the retina is detached! So, quick commercial break, and we will be back with more Lacey Fabulous numbers. Jennifer Love Hewitt yes. believes the con that they don't have any more money and so right. they're going to do one big mark. One last job. One last job. One final big mark so that she's like, I, but I don't want some small time shit. I want, we're going to Florida and we're going to go to South Beach. Is, or Palm Beach. Palm right? Beach. Palm Beach. Is that like South Beach? Oh, is that like Palm Beach? It's close. It's about two minutes from Fisher Island where Jeb Bush lives. It's close. It's close. <laughs> the Jeb Bushes? On Fisher Island? Mother always said, live on Fisher Island, get buried in Palm Beach. That way, you'll have the best of Florida. It's that way you have the best, best of, of Florida. Florida. Most, if not all, of my Florida geography knowledge does come from the birdcage. I love that. There's that. Yeah. Anyway, they go down the line of... Forget it. He's taken. Mama's boy. We could get around her. Pass. Mothers are deaf. Can't argue that. Pass, no right. this, pass, pass, and they get to Gene Hackman. He didn't get to do enough comedies, I think. Yeah, uh, you I know, agree. I think he's, I mean, obviously he's like fucking beyond talented, can do anything, is fabulous. Like, where's the next Gene Hackman? Like, where is he? I want, I want yeah. it. Paul Giamatti can't hold this entire thing by himself. You know, it's just him. <laughs> sure. He's the only one. But smoking is not permitted. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. So he's um, the billionaire heir to tobacco, old yeah. money, you know, constantly has a cigarette in his mouth. There's lots of um, phallic 
not nuances in this oh, movie. Oh yeah, they're no, they're just a lot they're of phallic, phallic things. You know, a lot of cigarettes, a lot of giant hard. Always penis. something in your mouth. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Oh, always something in your mouth. Oh, and her her um, Russian uh, look. Her Russian her Olga look. dinner yes. Olga look with uh. the the bustier corset with the and the. The and big the, the floopy skirt, skirt. and the, Ooh, it was good, uh, really good. Mm. And obviously this wig, the red Olga the red, wig. The old, oh, the wig is good. Now where are the they keeping these wigs? It'll take a day just to rebox your mother's wigs. Oh my God, can you imagine? Not one of you is trained. I would have liked, you know, next to the sewing machine, a, a little wig stand. Also, that would yeah. have been nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, and the like navy blue velvet draped look. Oh, and then the big, not peacock feather, but the big feathery poof within the leopard oh, robe. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, my God. It was so good. So good. Like, really, the looks are fabulous. Yeah. So iconic. Paige, the older the better. With luck, they die right after the wedding, and then you're talking widow money. <laughs> he might die right after the wedding, and then you're talking widow money. money. <laughs> She was so close. She was so close. And that's the, that's like kind of so perfect in this movie, right? No. No! Why me? Oh, wake up, you disgusting shit! Why me? No! <laughs> no. I was so close to $20 million, you know? Yeah. And or more. She was close to widow money. That's true. Oh, it almost happened. If they had signed papers and then the penis killed him, you know. It's, it's like um, a proper rated R, rated R for the right reasons. I don't know if that's the Is right Is it rated reasons. R? Yeah, I mean, there's all the, I think so, all the dialogue and everything. Oh, no. <gasps> it's PG-13. You know what? Good for them. Yeah. Because they put in a lot of jokes. Yes. I mean, there's he's impaled by a statued penis. That is true. He, he does. Um... And they make numerous ass play jokes. Just give it to me. Or would you rather have my heel up your ass? Who told you I'm into that? Pretty rough on the boss, weren't you? You know, he's not really into ass play. That's just like his sense of humor. <laughs> That's just his sense of humor. He's not really into, into ass, ass play, play, you know? You're gonna shove this heel, heel. right up your ass. That like, was there's the six a lot of. Heel. Um, they, they, they made it feel adult without it, yeah. I guess, being too risque for... The fucking MPAA. Because that was the other thing about anyone but you, not to harp on it, but it's rated R. Oh. But it's just because it's like everyone's naked. Oh. Huh. It's, there was actually one part that was actually rather scarring. Oh, no. It just came out of nowhere, and I was that quite will surprised haunt me by for, it. Forever. it was, I was like, oh, oh, oh! <laughs> that image will haunt me. See, and that's annoying because you know what else? That um, do more with that. The J Lo one. Um, shotgun wedding. Shotgun wedding was rated R two. It was. I'm pretty sure. Okay. And I was like, mm, mistake. These are the kinds of movies that should be at most PG thirteen. And and it can be on the edge. Yeah, of course. Push it as far as you push can. Push it as absolutely but far as you can. But you gotta get the PG thirteen because you want families to be able to watch it. You want families right. to be able to go see it. You want. Like, the jokes to go over a, a young enough kid's head. Right. But the parents to find it really funny. Yeah, there, um, was, there, was, yeah, there was explicit things in anyone but you that um, a children would not be able to ignore. Right. And I don't think that that's necessary, it typically. Just, it, wasn't like, it wasn't like a raunchy rom-com right. where that was the point. It right. wasn't the sweetest thing where you're like... Right, right, exactly. Your penis is so big. Your penis is so thick. Your penis is so pretty. You've got a handsome dick. You know, and... Too big to fit in here, which I still watched as probably a 14-year-old, so that's great, but... <laughs> right. Penis. You're too big to fit in here. Too big to fit in here. Anyway, we can move on. We yeah. can move on. All oh, right, but so she goes to this little dive bar. Wow, Jack, looks like she got a free drink and one of your balls. <laughs> I just think she's nervous being on her own. Oh yeah, she's a delicate flower. That's how she meets the love of her life. Jason Lee, who I really love. I mean, I was a big fan of all the Kevin Smith movies. I haven't revisited them. Okay. I don't know how well they're gonna turn out, but yeah. I was a big fan. Okay, great. And I really like Jason Lee, and I think he has something that's like unique. Does this look familiar? Might be mine. Well, if you're not sure. Thanks, now go. 
Look, my car doesn't drive so good with a tree in it. Not dangerous, but you know what I mean? Like a little sarcastic -y. Okay. He's not just nice guy who's, Fair. you know what I mean? There's, there's, there's a little something extra A little something on. different, right? He seems like a different kind of leading man. Sure. No, I'll do it. Just get the spare. Now. Look, I'm willing to explore the whole being dominated thing, okay? But let's just take it slow. I really enjoyed yeah, their romance, yes. and I thought it was refreshing and different. Yeah, well, it's fun because she is um, crazy. She's a bitch on heels. Well, yes, she comes in hot, right? But it's like fun foot in her mouth every time, right? Yeah. You stole my purse while well, you left it. She's so used to being able to trick everyone. Yes. The fact that he doesn't care or is different or is taking the piss out of her is really refreshing yeah. to her. Yeah, but I'd better check it out. Oh, wait, wait, I'm hurt. No, you're not. Nothing could hurt you. Are you mixing medications? And so that's the initial attraction. And then all this, you know, fun business with like the stars and I'm an environmentalist and all that and it's silly and it's fun and... and... I'm an environmentalist studying the effect of waste runoff in the neighboring wetlands. Oh, well, you environmentalists really dress hot. You know that he knows she's bullshit. Like, he yeah. sees through the bullshit immediately, but is still intrigued. And he's always, like, defending her. Like, oh, she's probably just nervous and putting on a front. Sure. But, like, there's something where he just immediately sees her. Yeah. And yeah. you feel that. Yeah. And it's similar to Mrs. Winterborn, right? Where he knows the whole time. Yeah. And he's waiting for her to tell him, and yeah. he's okay with it yeah. because he loves her so much. Yeah, he's like, that's true. You know, there's like that kind of. There is a very Mrs. Winterbornness to it, right? That's another version. Uh, like, uh, you know, they don't make movies like that anymore, and I'm like, no. I want more. I want more of that. Mm -hmm. Just, it's a very funny script. Yeah, I photograph stars. Look, just because they're famous doesn't mean they don't deserve their privacy too. The star is up there. They deserve their own privacy. What, like, what are you, some kind oh, of freaking... Oh, yeah, you're, you're using your telescope to spy on people in their boats? Stars up... The, those up, stars. Up there. Uh, uh. Tell me why you're here, really. I, I told you, I'm an environmentalist uh, student at the University of Miami. What, you, you don't believe me? There's a chill vibe about Jason Lee, and a, and he brings the comedy. He brings like that certain sense of humor, you yes. know, like oh my car doesn't drive so good with a tree in it. We should really get some out there. That they're piling up like that whole. It is a farce in many yes. ways. There's lots of farcical scenes with the the tire piercer, yep. and they, they just keep, keep going. Coming. Oh yeah. my gosh, and they're in over their heads essentially. These con women because they're doing a bigger and they're trying to do them both at the same time and all of these things. And so it piles on and piles on and they keep having to improvise, improvise, yeah. improvise. But their skills are so good yeah. that it's really fun to watch and you don't, it's not cringy. You're not no, like, it makes it you're funny. not like, oh God, they're gonna, you're like, oh no, what's that? Oh no, not that. Right. has one of my favorite tropes, which is Sarah Silverman shows up to be exposition dump. Yeah, his dad left it to him. Of course, all these development creeps are trying to give him like three mil for the place. Whole world's gonna be gaps in Starbucks, right? Well, you know, this was his dad's bar and some big developers offered him $3 million to sell it, but he said he would never do that because of that. Wow, for waitress, she had an awful lot of information. <laughs> Aren't we lucky we were there to get all that information? seemed extraneous at the time. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, that was really helpful information. Thank you, lady. But yeah, yeah, it was. Oh, and, and speaking of like how many skills they have to show off, mm -hmm. right? They all have different, Jennifer Love Hewitt and Sigourney Weaver have different accents they're putting on. Oh, yeah. Da, da. Yeah, bienvenue to Latina. Oh, um, to Latina. Excellent choice. The steak tartare. Oh, I love a woman who eats raw meat. Sometimes for no reason, but that's okay. Wait, there was no reason for her to be an English maid? This need to please my employer in any way possible. I mean, there's really no reason for her to be Russian other than comedy, you know what I mean? Like, it I only complicates <laughs> things for them. But sure, why not? Maybe that's the fake passport she got? Who knows, right? The legal matters that's of like, fair. how did you marry so many people well, with the names? And... Although, okay, I will say, yes. 
that ended up being You're helpful. getting deported tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. You must leave the country no later than tomorrow. Oh. If she hadn't had that the Russian the background. That was the plan. She, she had she that as a, to force a plan hand. B, You're right. right? You know what? You're right. Everything comes together because this movie makes sense and they wrote it well. She just was um, not very smart to go to the Russian restaurant. Oh my gosh. А что если я тебя сейчас отведу на кухню и хорошо там отжарю? Да. Да. And the waiter who catches her out oh, yeah. um, in Russian, Ilya Baskin, I did have to look up his name, but he plays one of the terrorists in Air Force One. Love it. A movie that I also watched a lot. Well, Harrison Ford, right? Harrison Ford. Gary Oldman. <laughs> I think that's where the obsession began. Wow, really? With Gary Oldman. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, not, I mean, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, with Gary Oldman, I believe that is where it began. Okay. And then it just spread out from there. So he shows up, uh, we get an impromptu musical number. You don't know how lucky you are, boy. Back in the USSR. Ooh, another look I loved was her golf Oh my God. Look. This is, okay, two things. Yes. One, mm -hmm. any hole is a goal runway category Obsessed. has to happen. Obsessed. Two, I want someone to do this look for it. Yeah. And just have the fucking golf club and it's great. It's great. Mm. Or mm, mm, if you mm. needed to, it was white so you could always do a tennis. White party, oh. <laughs> yes, right. If on the show they never do any hole is the goal, you could drop the golf club and just do white party look. Or right. if you need to do tennis, you could do tennis racket with it. Do tennis? If you, if you, for, you can't get a golf club. I don't know, April. I'm just saying oh, hey, I was just this wondering. look could also be a tennis, tennis look. I didn't know if tennis was like a, a euphemism for something I didn't no. know. No, but tennis whites of is a, a famous of thing. Of course. No, this is the kind of sports look I want to see. Absolutely. You know, this is what I want to wear. Yes. <laughs> oh, oosh. Oh, how you can sleep on so long, <gasps> How do you sleep on this pillow? It's so hard. Oh! oh! <laughs> oh but it was cigarettes. the cigarettes that really put him oh over the edge. God. That's when that he was, was like, right, of course, not the cigarettes. You bitch! Ooh. Oh, cigarettes. Oh. I feel like vomiting. And the comedy shot of, you know, like, don't you believe me? Oh, yeah. You have to believe me. Pan out, you know. Yeah, oh, it's the police taking her away. It was like, great. you utilize the camera for the comedy. I don't know yes. why that has been forgotten. I genuinely am like, it's a tool. Use it. Yeah. You must believe in my complete and total innocence. The frame. Use the frame for comedy. <sighs> When they're when he's carrying her down the never ending hallway. It was like holy grail, you know. <laughs> he was just never getting anywhere. I'm ready to do things to you that no woman has ever done before. How about a becomes sort of a, uh, you know, again, this was a, we didn't pick this for summer camp because no. it came out so much later, mm. but it really fits a lot of the childhood tropes that I was into, you know, okay, like yep. weird, dark humor, yep. dead body sure. sort of humor, yep. uh, impromptu musical numbers, yep. costume changes. They're basically in drag, basically. you know, like there was a lot of things actually that check a lot of boxes here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. So anyway, I've just thought about that. But no. so Gene Hackman's coughing up, uh, coughing up a lung and then impales himself on the penis. Penis! And I, I don't entirely know how that killed him, but that's I think fine. it just... <laughs> Uh-oh. Maybe it just was happenstance. Maybe I, he died and he, uh, yes, impaled himself. Yes, it was, you know, too um, much excitement. I don't right. know. Oh, but she is in this, like, black satin strapless. It was very Gilda, uh, Rita Hayworth, you know? Yes. It was very that. The, yeah. The fit. It was great. It was really good. 
Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, he falls off the balcony. <laughs> One simple thing. Oh, I don't consider holding a 500 pound corpse simple. When Jennifer Love Hewitt's trying to hold I mean, him this up. just becomes, you know, the trouble with Harry. Like, it just becomes a dark black comedy, and yet it stays so light. It, it doesn't, like, dwell. If you told me this was based off of a French play, I'd be like, yes, of that course. That makes perfect sense. It, maybe it is. I don't maybe, think it is. It didn't maybe say it anything, but yeah. perhaps inspired by And his, I don't know, his, like, duck feet, you know, green socks that oh, are just, yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> he falls, and then they put him in the trunk, and they make sure there's no more damage to the body, and he's always, oh, uh, all of it. Where's the penis? Oh, we left it in the car. You know, it's just, it was just so silly and so funny, silly. and Ray Liotta comes back because he's really in love with her, and yep. then the con changes again and the con changes again yep. and now he wants to you know get his money and they have to keep, and then um, oh my god the money's all gone because they got conned by Barbara and then housekeeping you want your bed turned down no 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 housekeeping no 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 mm -mm. he gets tied up in a bed yeah oh yes and that maid is a famous character actress, I'm and sure. I don't remember her name, but like she's in a that'll be an extra twenty. Like she's yeah, in no. everything. <laughs> I, but yeah, so Ray Liotta is gonna now he's on their tail. Like everyone's, right. you know, it's piling on, it's piling on. But you never feel like they can't handle themselves. They always feel like they're gonna land on their feet. Yeah, they're gonna find a way to make it work because they can they can con anyone. It's just like God. Now we have to do this. Can't we just relax for a minute? You yeah. know, it's like oh, we have to now work this thing or work that person. It's a full-time job. Yeah, wow. I mean, honestly, though, she is working. Right. I mean. We're gonna dry up in some filthy lesbo lockdown with bad lighting. Hey, I don't have to kill you to kill you. Bad lighting! <laughs> I always remember that. Yeah, Ray Liotta's doing a caricature, but it's really working. I don't yeah. know, he doesn't, look at all the fish! You know, it's just like, it's so broad. Look at all the fish! So she ends up having to con Jason Lee right. to, to uh, get the money so to give to Ray them. Liotta and you know it's all circling around each other. They get married. Now this was interesting. So she picks out her wedding dress, right? Mm -hmm. It's awful. But I think it's really purposeful. Okay. She's 21 uh -huh. at the time, right? She's used to constantly being objectified, constantly having her tits out and having this micro mini and she's finally, you know, having her fantasy, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. she dresses very young, demure. Sure. It's very sweet. Sure. It's covered up. Yeah. She's trying to start anew. Hello, Amos Tart. And she never even saw the license plate. And so even though the dress is in fact very ugly, I think it's on, not, it's not ugly on purpose, but I feel like the silhouette is a choice on purpose. Fair. I get that. I can, I'll, I'll allow that. And it, you know, it wasn't that ugly. No, but you know, it wasn't like But it wasn't ah! like, oh my, like when, when Sigourney Weaver's getting married at the beginning, you're like, oh my God, yes. And this, you're like, mm, no. Well, I don't know what they did with her hair. I don't know what happened. Yeah. So they get, they get married and this chartreuse bedazzled robe that she is wearing it's so simple, but yes. it's so fabulous. Yes, it's true. It's just those but tiny every... little studs, but they're they're small and they're perfect. And it's like they're perfect. They're beautiful. Oh, Did you stone that yourself? I mean, yes. apparently, yeah. You're perfect. Some You're beautiful. Them. You look like Linda Evangelista. You're a model. Everything about you is perfect. Did you stone those tights? Oh, you're smiling. So like in the context of the movie, though, it makes sense that like they've embellished everything themselves. Yes. Yeah. You do believe that they're making their clothes, making their wigs, you know, yeah. like presenting yeah. themselves in a certain way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so they're going to con uh, Jason Lee one last time. Right. They get married. Uh, she falls asleep. Two Beatles tracks. Everything is clear in my heart. And she is like, well, he loves me too much. He's not yeah. going to do it. Yeah. And Sigourney Weaver. With the remote. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not worried. Is that why you're melting down the remote? Cute. Then Sigourney Weaver tries to seduce him, and he says no. And then she drugs him, we find out later. Right, because 
again, the movie constantly is shifting on its head. Yes. Constantly, constantly. Who do you trust? Who's going to go farther? Ba -ba 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 -ba. She mix him. Yeah. Now, I don't know how all the finances work out in the end. And there's no explanation scene where she says, actually, that was my mom. And she was trying to seduce you. And then she gave you a roofie. You know, um, but the movie moves on. And so do we. <laughs> Yep, and everyone lives happily ever after. The movie after. says, don't worry about it. He didn't, and I go, okay. Yep. I'm fine with that. Yep. We got the bar back. Here's the deed. Yep. Let's be together again. Yep. It's going to be fabulous. They seem to focus on the paperwork. It seemed like there was something that I was missing. They showed it seemingly for a reason, but also it was too short. Yes. I, I don't and know. And so I was like, well, uh, it was great. <laughs> you know, I don't know. The, uh, you got the bar back. <laughs> it's happily ever after. And then the extra button ending that now... Ray Liotta and her are actually perfect for each other. And, you know, the comedy pan out of, um, wow, I never thought I could find anyone that I loved again. And he's seducing Anne Bancroft, you know, and she's across the way, like the villain witch she is with her red I mean, eyes. And this white hooded, I mean, this was also very bum, Adam's bum, bum, family bum, values. Bum. Oh, yes. How? How? Yeah. Help. Help. The, I forgot how iconic the soundtrack is in my mind mm. and um, how much I miss themes. Yeah. Anyway, I just adore this movie. Yeah. I think the casting is perfection. Yeah, I agree. And the writing is tight. Uh, we had said maybe it could have trimmed, you know. You could probably trim like six eight minutes. minutes. Something like that. But even so, with all the twists and turns, you're never lost because no. everyone's very clear in what they're doing and the way things unfold. It's a tight script. It is. It tight is. Tight script. Make more of these. I don't know if David Mirkin is working, I don't know. but let's do it. Come on, something. Let's make it happen. Yeah, I, I definitely would like more. And I was thinking about it, I was like, I wouldn't recast it because I really agree. I, yeah. It's great. Yeah. It works. It's mm -hmm. perfect. I love it. But I want more. It's sort of like um, Diva's Christmas Carol, right? Like, um, yes. I, I don't want to recast, obviously, no. but I do want more. Yeah. <laughs> Do I think Vanessa Williams was perfect and great and I loved it? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Do I want Queen Latifah? Yes. Yes, also that. I would love more female lead yeah. driven films mm -hmm. where they're in control, they're smart, they're capable, yeah. they are they, dealing they with make adversity. Sense. They and, act and, like human beings. Yeah. And they have, right, they act like human beings, even when they're acting like crazy human beings. Right. They act like human beings. Yeah. I am not a sick slut. One penis coming up, Mom. Wendy! Uh, hello. And I'm like, I like this. Because the motivation is clear. Yeah. I cannot express how much, how clear it was in this film that I was like, oh, that's what, it, okay, I understand. Give me a simple motivation background. Mm -hmm. Who is this character? Why are they doing what they're doing? You tell me, who is your daddy and what does he do? Anyway. Cheers anyway. to Jordan and Sam. Thank you. Yes. This was really, it was. It was a fun rewatch. It was a good one. Yeah. Cheers.